What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman, aka All Fires. Now, admittedly, there have been a ton of breakdowns, theories, and conjecture regarding this most recent Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness trailer, and rightfully so, we as the YouTube community went pretty hard on that last Spider-Man trailer, but by the time it dropped, we all sort of knew what was going on, including the very obviously deleted Spider-Man. But with this most recent Doctor Strange trailer, it's totally the opposite. Too many brand new Easter eggs, references, well, we were left with more questions than before it even dropped. And while I don't normally ever consume any other Marvel YouTube channels, not because I don't want to, a lot of those guys are my friends, just because it's easier to share my own thoughts and ideas, be a writer and or not parakeet or repeat anybody, if I don't watch them or know what they say in the first place, this week I sort of did. Watched a lot of my friends' channels, heard what other people had to say, and really, bravo, I'm more hyped than ever, and people did what they do and broke everything down, but there's sort of one angle I think a lot of people are missing, something that's pretty obvious to me, so I actually took a day off at the channel yesterday to compose my thoughts, and what I want to present to you guys is my unifying theory on exactly which version of the X-Men we're getting in the MCU, the Easter egg they seeded in the Savage Land thumb, and its specific place in the trailer, we're going to talk about that, why I think it's very obvious which version we're getting and how it not only means we're getting them in this film, but we're seeing the future of this team, or rather I should say the past of this X-Men in the future of the MCU. We're breaking down the Savage Land Easter egg and what it means for Marvel Phase 4 X-Men introduction, where we'll see them again after this film. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, I do daily Marvel content at this channel and I've been doing it every single day since Infinity War. I cover everything, official Easter eggs, breakdowns, trailers. Marvel's even nice enough to let me interview their directors and talent sometimes. I've even been to one or two red carpet premieres, but I also cover all the other crazy stuff, the rumors, the anonymous Twitter scoops and everything in between. So if any of that's for you, consider hitting the sub button and leaving a comment down below. As we push towards a million subscribers this year, which we are well on our way to, we're giving away PlayStation 5s every 20,000 subscribers, and we're about to hit the next one any day now. So again, if you want to be entered to win, hit the sub button, leave a comment down below, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video. We'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Now, as we see America Chavez and Doctor Strange go breaking through the multiverse again later in the trailer, if you freeze it for these frames here, you can clearly see dinosaurs in the background. And as a lot of people on the internet immediately pointed out, the one prominent place that dinosaurs feature in the Marvel Universe is the Savage Land, a preserve located in Antarctica. Now, in the history of Savage Land, there are actually a lot of characters, even included the Beyonders, that are connected to it in reasons it's there with a bunch of dinosaurs landlocked in the middle of Antarctica and protected from everybody else. But namely, some certain X-Men villains at large have made this place their base and home. Magneto at one point, but also Sauron. That's a crossover story that we saw played many times, the connection to the X-Men, out in the animated universe from the early 90s. And as I was pouring over every single frame meticulously and slowly, you can't help but notice, and only for a couple of frames towards the end, as Doctor Strange and America Chavez break into the next dimension, you can clearly see it's animated. Now, I questioned for a moment if this was just previs, pre effects, and hadn't been textured yet, but no. Look at Doctor Strange. His comp is floating into that universe and it's starting to turn animated, which means if this was just pre-effects, there's no reason you would start drawing over his real-life comp. That would just not be complete yet. This is clearly an animated universe, which is Marvel confirming in this moment, right after the Savage Lands Easter egg, they're willing to bring in the animated universe and canonize them as well in the Multiverse of Madness, which means that early animated X-Men are as much on the table as any of the previous live Fox versions that we saw. And quite honestly, given all the evidence, I think that's the version we're getting in live action MCU. There are a ton of reasons in Easter eggs for this. Let me explain. First off, it's not just because they showed us the animated universe, that just confirms they're willing to do it. But when everyone jumps to assume this is one of the previous live action versions, yeah, I get it. It's the same actor. It's Professor X Patrick Stewart that we've known for all these years on the silver screen. Logically, it would be one of those versions, right? Well, he's very publicly stated a million times that what he watched at the end of Logan was a very permanent and poignant ending to his role as that character. It was the same time that him and Hugh Jackman decided to turn down the offer from Kevin Feige and... By avoiding that using the variant storyline, he could be any other version than one of the ones we saw from the live action universe. In fact, in order to keep that storyline intact, he would have to be a different version. 
also remember Marvel Studios, not just months before this, announced in Out of Nowhere the return of the X-Men animated series 97 coming to Disney Plus next year. Not only does this offer us the way to bring over the animated series and actually give it stake in the live MCU, when we see the cartoon in the future picking up where it left off, then it gives all of those storylines actual consequence. It's building into where Professor X was, this version of him, before we saw him in the live action MCU. And again, if they're using the animated Professor X, that would allow them in the future of other animated X-Men series coming up after X-Men 97, possibly in 98, 99, to sort of tell the story of how he ran into the multiversal Illuminati before we see him in the upcoming Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. But quite honestly, the best and coolest side effect, if this is true, would be the fact that if Hugh Jackman Wolverine actually comes back for this, it would immediately put him into the yellow suit without having to explain why. Finally, we'll get Hugh Jackman in an actual authentic Wolverine. Oh my God, if it's gonna be blue and yellow, I'm gonna cry. Are we going to get the animated blue and yellow Wolverine costume? I literally am just now thinking this live on this take. I'm going to tell my editor not to pull this out. I actually just, I literally am just coming to that. This is the version of Wolverine. Oh my God. I have never wanted one of my theories to be more right than I do right in this moment. Oh man, that would be so awesome. Not to mention, it would give us so many options for characters that we really didn't get a chance to see. Like, you'd have to have animated version of Gambit, right? And then he would come live action. Oh man, I can't wait to see this film. I know that these crazy cameos are wild fan service, but when they've gone to the extent that they've gone to break this wide open, um, I think it just leaves so many options on the table. And I've, I've had some friends that have brought up, and I see it in the comments too, this idea and the sentiment of the stakes not being worth it. But if you guys read Marvel Comics back in the day, I mean, they were resetting and rebooting stuff all the time. You'd even have two separate runs of like Captain America or Spider-Man running at the same time. And you know, if you like Marvel content, some of it's gonna be good and some of it's gonna be bad, but that's part of suspending the disbelief uh, for this content. And look, we love it because it's been forged in realism in the cinema in the last 10 years. But I think Kevin Feige and co have kind of embraced the idea that you can only do so much with the realism if you're going to embrace the rest of the Marvel catalog. And now here we are talking about live action animated Wolverine wearing this costume, except it's Hugh Jackman. And I'm going to go cry. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below about my theory. And do you think it makes a lot of sense that, yeah, it's going to be the animated series because then when we get it next year, it all ties together. Yay, Marvel, Disney, they're doing it. We're doing it. Quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. All right, this is super simple. We're giving away a ton of PlayStations every 20,000 subscribers, all the way up to a million as a thank you if you want to be entered to win. Super simple. All you got to do, hit the sub button, leave a comment down below because it's truly random. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos. The same way. <laughs> Matt, I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm laughing because I really I really came uh, I really came unscrewed in the last two minutes of this video. So in a way that I don't normally do, you know. But hey, you can't always keep it buttoned up. Shoot, I'm going on like 2,000 videos. So leave a comment down below. You guys know the deal. Whatever. You know the algorithm's weird. So hit the notification bell with all notifications on. And of course, I want you to hit the like button. But you're gonna do that whether I tell you to or not. Anyway. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter, um, at I Am Fires. Not really active on Twitter. I really should be Instagram. I'm very active. It's a lot of Marvel memes. I also make music. I go by All Fires on every platform, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, hey, pretty positive response from you guys so far. Um, and you've actually helped one of my tracks go viral on Spotify. So uh, it's the one in the background right here. Hats off to you. And thank you. If you're one of the people who helped do that, I really appreciate it. Thanks for checking this channel out. Stick around. We'll be posting again real soon.